What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on my channel. If you're new to my channel, take a look around. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. All right, so my name is Adana, for those of you who do not know, and I was like reminiscing and kind of just being nostalgic about PA school, like not too nostalgic, but like a little nostalgic. Like I'm glad that it's over, but I was being a little nostalgic. And so I was thinking about stuff and I was like, you know what? There are some things I wish I knew before PA school. That is what this video is gonna be about. It's gonna be about the eight things that I wish I knew before PA school. So the number one thing I wish I knew before PA school, and I'm sure many of you like already are on board with me, is how we so I didn't realize um, how expensive PA school was going to be because, you know, honestly, it's like across the board, like there's so many different factors that goes into exactly like how expensive your particular program is going to be. So like looking at the difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition versus private and public uh, universities and colleges versus like community colleges that are attached to like a four-year college. Honestly, like all of those things play a role. And I wish I had known or like just kind of done a little bit more research on that because um, I chose a school. I mean, I would have still chosen the school that I went to, but I chose a school that was like pretty expensive, but there were other options like in my local area or in, you know, another like three or so hours away from my home that were like, a lot less expensive, like 50 grand less expensive. And so for me, that was something that, you know, I kind of like didn't really think about, but I thought about it, but not as much as I should have. So for you guys, I want you all to really vet those programs, like look at the various different things that, you know, in, that play a role in that. So are you going to be an in-state student or an out-of-state student. So are you doing in-state tuition or out-of-state tuition? Is it a private university or public? Because you get funding for like public universities that you don't necessarily get for private universities. And private universities are typically more expensive anyways. So that's important to actually, you know, have and keep in mind. And then just in general, like what is the amount that you're paying? Are you paying like 25,000 a year, making your total like 50? Are you paying 50,000 a year, making a total 100? Are you paying 70,000 a year, like some schools that I've heard of, making your total 140? So all of those play a role. Um, I wish I'd known about it. I didn't, but that is what this video is for. And so hopefully like the rest of these help you out as well. So the next thing, the number two thing that I wish I knew about PA school before I started was the fact that there were hybrid programs. So I have a friend of mine that's in like a part-time program. It's a three-year program. It's part-time. She's able to work and also go to PA school, which to me is bananas. Like, I'm like, what the freak? Like, where was I? But also, you know, we are looking at Yale and yes, Yale is a new program, but there were other programs that also had like this hybrid, you know, like computer-based online model. Like Yale wasn't like the creator of this. They just were, you know, the big name in it. And so understanding that there were hybrid programs where it would also like cut down on my costs. Maybe I would not have to like leave my home and actually move to another state like I did for a year. Those were things that I wish I had known, but I didn't. And that's just kind of because I really didn't go through like obviously like each of the 200 plus programs that there are for PA schools because that would be bananas. But I mean, just maybe even Googling like hybrid PA programs or online PA programs and seeing what pops up to just kind of give yourself a better idea of all of your options is a benefit and would be important for you to do. So that is one thing that I wish I had known before PA school. I didn't, but now you guys know that. With the whole hybrid thing, again, my third one was the online options. So obviously, now, it's not completely online. It is kind of like a hybrid as well, but it's the majority of it is online. And so I didn't know that there were those options. You know, I thought, 
that was only like an NP, like nurse practitioner thing, um, having online programs. But apparently there are several PA schools that do have like an online hybrid program as well, where you kind of just go on campus like once a month or so, or once a quarter to kind of meet with the professors and things like that. And so for me, had I known that, I think that would have been a benefit to my life and my family's life because, you know, we wouldn't have had to shed out so much money to move and then pay for the program and live there for a year and then move back to my current state and be there. So um, all of that being said, uh, this kind of just all boils down to doing your research and making sure that you're aware of all of your various different options. So the fourth thing that I wish I knew about PA school was the fact that it is hard. So um, obviously, you know, like I went to undergrad, I did well at undergrad, um, you know, I didn't really suck at undergrad. I had like one class my senior year because I had done like a bunch of AP classes in high school and then um, kind of front loaded in my freshman, sophomore and junior year. So I, I was like coasting, right? And I thought like, okay, like, I did great in undergrad. I got into like some med schools. I can obviously up, like ace PA school, no problem. Ha! Got it! I can do the same things that I did, which was like study the night before and pass this stuff. And I was wrong because PA school is hard. Like the magnitude and the multitude of information that you actually have to remember is a lot. And so for me, I think it was a matter of understanding like, hey, you're gonna have to kind of change up your way of doing things. Like, you don't got this girl, okay? Like, you gotta make sure that you work for this. Like, this thing is not easy. And rightfully so, because you have people's lives in your hand. So for me, that was like really important to kind of grasp. And I got that pretty early, like my first semester <laughs> of PA school, I realized this mess is not for the light of heart. It is actually pretty hard. Um, and you do have to put work into it, but it's doable. So that's another thing I was showing you before PA school. Another thing that I did not know was that like the name of the school that you go to, it doesn't matter, right? So I know like people like myself, when I was initially applying, I was like, all right, I'm gonna apply to Emory and Yale and you know, all of these like big name schools, USC and things like that. And I was like, I wanted like that name because with med school, you know, and just with undergrad, like name matters, like that prestige of the program matters, right? But it's not the case with PA schools. Like it does not matter what PA school you went to, as long as you graduate from a PA school and you pass your boards, that's what matters. Did you pass your boards? Are you certified to work? If so, let me go ahead and hire you for the job because that's what jobs are looking at. They're looking at, are you certified? And so I think that I spent a lot of money that I probably wouldn't have spent the first time I applied, applying to programs that I really didn't qualify for because of the various different prerequisite requirements that they were requiring. And I was looking at the prestige of things and I didn't realize, hey, like, the name don't matter, okay? As long as it says PA school at the end of it. So that was something that I wish I knew um, then that I know now, but whatever, I graduated. So another thing that I realized very quickly in PA school is that it's important to know your place. So, um, you know, as a student coming in and more so as like an adult coming in, like I was already adult and I was adulting, you know, I had a whole family. So like I'm, I'm this adult, but at the same time, now you are like back in a subordinate position in your student. And so there were things that I wanted to do or like the, the way that maybe like I was used to speaking to people and things like that, that didn't necessarily gel well, like in like some of my situations that I was in. And so for me, it, it was tough. Like it was a, a little bit of a learning curve, but I had to realize like, all right, like you still gotta know your place. Like you can still stand up for yourself and do, you know, like be bold about certain things. But at the same time, like kind of know when to like step back, be quiet, like be off to the side and know your place. And so that was something that I feel like myself and then like a lot of people coming into PA school don't realize because you're so used to doing things like 
yourself or on your own or you know living your own life and then you're coming in with all of these various different rules and regulations that the faculty and staff are putting on you and you're like this stuff is ridiculous but you know it's not really your place to say for the most part like some things you can be like hey like man like this is this is actually pretty ridiculous but there are other things where you can like you actually need to like take a step back and know your place and realize like you know what let me just relax because I'm here to get my education and that's really it. I want to get my education, become a PA, become certified. And so I will just have to kind of bite the bullet. So um, that was something important that I think I needed to learn. And I think a lot of pre-PAs and PA students need to learn is know your place. So my number seven, I guess you can say, like the thing that I wish I knew before I started PA school was, you know, how like, important it is to have me time. Why about yourself? Why about yourself? So I think a lot of it, like throughout my time in PA school, like I was so grateful for the Sabbath. I was so grateful for that Sunset Friday to Sunset Saturday because PA school was so freaking stressful. Like, let me tell you, like emotionally draining, mentally draining, you have all of this stuff going on in your head and it's like, well, why? Like, what, what the freak? Like, I need a break. And so it was so important to have that me time because honestly, like that, that 24 hours of recuperating was the best thing that you could possibly get because it was so needed. You've gone through this week, five days a week, of, you know, just being in a classroom, sitting down for, you know, eight hours a day with the same people and they're getting on your nerves, obviously, you know, like <laughs> they're getting on your nerves because you're with them for this long period of time. And then you get this break, this ah, moment to yourself. And so um, it was just really important to have that me time with myself and my family. And I think that it's important for you all to realize that as well you know, go in, realize like, hey, yes, I'm about these books. I'm trying to study. I'm trying to get good grades. Yes, I'm trying to become a PA. But at the same time, I need to focus on my mental health, my spiritual health, um, my physical health and do things that are going to be beneficial to me as well. And so take the time to do that because it is very, very important. And lastly, another thing that I wish, my number eight thing that I wish I knew before PA school was how important it is to have friends and ultimately like the support system. So I initially went to, to PA school. I'm like, look, like I got my family. I'm good. I'm just here to become a PA. I'm here to get that C and then go out and like take care of patients and have be living the good life, right? Like that is what I had in mind. Um, I wasn't really like going in being like, oh, I'm going to have like lifelong friends and this is going to be great. But I did obtain that, you know, like there are people there that are going to be my friends like for a long time, you know, and it was important to have those people that I connect with and important to have those people in my life um, while we were going through the trenches together, going through the struggle together. Um, and so though you may be like a hermit um, or you may be like an island of one person, like when you get into PA school, trust me when I say it is important to find that tribe, find your people that you are going to like go through this journey with because it is so important to have that support have somebody else that knows exactly what you're going through um exactly how you're feeling ish obviously and then you know they can give you advice and you know just kind of bounce ideas off of each other on like how to better handle things or even if it's a concept that you're struggling with having somebody there that knows like the same stuff that you're dealing with is important you know i can't go home and talk to my husband about like lactic acidosis or respiratory acidosis because he has no idea what that is but I can talk to my friends about that so that was actually really important I think that's a really a good take home for you all is to go in there you don't have to be like going in there thinking that this is going to be um just a party time I'm just gonna have a great time make a bunch of friends no you're still there to learn and to become a PA but at the same time it is 
very important for you to have that great support system. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Hopefully it kind of changes your mindset a little bit on what you're going to do as you're going into PA school. If you have any other things that you think is important um, as a PA student as currently, or maybe that you think might be important as a pre-PA, please leave that in the comment section below so that all the subscribers can see. If you have any other ideas for videos, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below as well. Subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and like this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.